Hello and welcome to another Bushwhacker Review. Today we are going to be taking a look at Greg Biffle's Cheese It Ford from 2015. As always, take a look at the box. You just have a generic Greg Biffle box from 2015. Render of a car right there, 16, Greg Biffle, Roush Fenway Racing, picture of Greg. Down the side, Greg Biffle, another picture of Greg. A total of 865 of these things. Roush Fenway Racing, number 16, Greg Biffle. More Greg Biffle and 16s on the back of the box, 2015 Action Platinum Series, and you of course have your copyright and such on the bottom of the box. Here is the car itself. As you can see, this is during the era where uh, Kellogg's was, for some reason, putting their cars on bases like they didn't want children playing with the Cheez-It car, because that makes total sense. These are very easy to take off the base if you really want to. All you have to do is just kind of use like a Dremel or something to get the epoxy like glue stuff out. And then underneath it is just a triangle screw. If you do do it though, you just want to know that you want to keep this base intact and you want to keep it where you can, you know, technically screw it back in if you had to, because if you're ever going to put it back in that box, like the styrofoam is different where it like slides and hooks around the bottom of the base. So if you don't have that working, you're not, this car is just going to be bouncing around the box. But anyways, Greg Biffle raced this car in the 2015 Cheez-It 355 at the Glen. He might have raced it more than once, but I specifically remember it because that was the race that Joey Logano beat Kevin Harvick in a great fuel mileage exciting finish. Back when Watkins Glen used to be just so amazing. Back when Watkins Glen race used to have like differing strategies and, you know, fuel strategies and people running out of fuel and stretching it and people pitting later with tires and more fuel and... Back in Watkins, that was really nice, and now this new car with this new package just kind of ruined it. I used to never be bored at a Watkins Glen race, and like this year, I was pretty bored at the Watkins Glen race, but whatever. Anyways, enough ranting, back to this car. This is one of the last Cheez It, full Cheez It sponsorship cars in NASCAR. Within these couple years, Cheez It kind of dipped. They have popped back up on the Kroger cars with Stenhouse just this past year. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., I believe it was the first Talladega race, ran a Kroger Cheez-It car, so they have some interest in coming back into the sport. This car is strangely in that little, like, weird set where it's, like, it's rare, but it's not valuable. Like, it pops up and sells for, like, $30, but there's, like, times where, like, months go by and not a single one pops up on eBay or anywhere. It's very odd. Anyways, let's get down to sponsors. On the hood, you have Cheez-It. Got Ford Fusion number 16 and Roush Fenway Racing. Down the side, you got Cheez It. You got Ortho down there with some pictures of some Cheez Its. You got International Mac Tools, Champion Spark Plugs, and Sherwin Williams. Nothing on the C post. On the B post, you have Ford Go Further, Cheez It, Coca Cola, and Eco Power. The amount of oil companies that Roush has gone through over the years is kind of hilarious. They've had like every single one of them. Just, like, think about, like, they had Vaveline, they had Pennzoil. I don't know if they had Quaker State, but then they had, you know, Eco Power, they had Performance Plus, now they have Castrol. <laughs> like, they've had a ton of different oil sponsors over the years. It's kind of funny. There's Greg Biffle's signature on the name rail. Back in the day when we had them, I still had a good pile of contingency sponsors, as I just stumbled over those words. But, so now we get, like, one or two, and that's usually just the series logo and maybe, like, a NASCAR Salutes logo, but... Definitely do miss these days. Anyways, on the back, you have Real Cheese Matters. Cheese It Ford, number 16, and Roush Fenway Racing. Got Cheese It on the roof and the deck lid. This is number 318. Got the same stuff down the other side as usual. Take a look under the hood if I can even get to the hood. There we go. Can't really get under the uh, car to get to the hood because of the base. Since it's powered by Ford, Cheese It, and K&N air filters under there, there's the engine detail if you want to see that. This is back still when the cars did have an opening a deck lid. Put your fuel cell back there, and of course, roof flaps open. And there's the underside of the car again if you want to see that between the base. Back on there's a lot more detail to these cars. Not a whole lot of talk about the car like this. I was just re-watching that 2015 Watkins Glen race, and yeah, he had an eventful day. Earlier in the race, he, like, blew a tire and went through the grass and, like, bent up his nose a little. 
Then he used some fuel strategy and he was up in like the top five at the end of the race, but slowly started to fall back and then like blew the uh, bus stop again and had to stop and lost more spots. And he had an eventful race for having, you know, the same car with the sponsor as the title sponsor of the race. I miss those Cheez-It races especially. That was so cool when you just got, the driver just got that big, huge Cheez-It trophy. It was just like a giant Cheez-It on a pedestal. We don't really have any fun races anymore. Like the last couple of years, when has there been like a really fun sponsor race? Since like the Bushy McBush race in like, what was that, 2021? Or yeah, I think it was 2021. Like it's just like, Every race now is just some like generic like sponsor, mortgage sponsor, something that's just is just not really that fun anymore. We don't really have any funny trophies anymore either. I think Wilkesboro had some fun like moonshine trophy, but I don't know. Anyways, if you want this car, like I said earlier, it is one of those cars that is rare but not valuable. So if you find one, you're not going to be paying a whole lot, I don't think, but finding one is the problem. I said back like a few months ago when I was, you know, got that Terry Labonte car. This is one of the cars that I really wanted for like to get a couple cheese it cars. And like at the time there was not one on eBay and it took like months for one to even pop up on eBay. It's one of those weird cars. He also has the Patrick Star SpongeBob cheese it car, which is also rare, but that one has actual value to it. Like that one's rare, but that one actually goes for like a hundred plus on eBay. So might be a little bit harder to get. Remember, for all of your diecast needs, you can go to circlebdiecast.com, and if you use the code BWAC, you can get $5 off shipping on any order over $30. So go check out if you want anything. But I think that's much all there is to say. This has been a review of Greg Biffle's Cheese It Forward from 2015. Hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.